Hi guys, so first things first, if we've had a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new viewers recently, but a lot of you new viewers aren't subscribed, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and also hit the bell, so whenever we have a new video uploaded, you will get a notification, so you won't miss out on any new videos. And if you do get something out of the video, or you find something helpful in it, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for us. So, as far as this car goes, and this video goes, I thought I'd do something a little bit different to the normal style video that we do. Rather than do a tutorial on something or really go into detail with a lot of pop-ups on the screen and all that sort of thing, I thought I'd cut this one a bit bare, we'll have no pop-ups in it, nothing like that, we'll have no music in the background and I'm just really going to do a bit of a walkthrough and a chat about the actual paintwork of the base and clear stage on this car, what I'm doing and when. So first things first, for me the most underused but most important tool to any painter is your tack cloth now in any job I will tack a job two or three times during the job um, to make sure it stays nice and clean and just to make sure that especially between coats none of that overspray dust settling on the car and causing any excess dirt nibs that we don't really want in the final result and if you wait till the end of this video and you see the final result on this car then you will see that tack ragging it as you go along and trying to tack your blend areas and a few bits and bobs in between coats really does make a massive difference. This particular car, um, I painted this all with the eye waters and it came out lovely and clean. I think it had like a couple of nibs on it and it was just literally denib it, polish it and straight out the door. There was no full polish on it, just the nibs and that was it. It was just, it really was that clean, it didn't really need any more work doing to it than that. And for me as a painter, when you get a job that clean and that nice, it really does give you that, you know, real good feeling of satisfaction at the end of it that you've done the best that you could on the job. Now, some people watch the channel and think that, you know, oh, wow, wow, you know, you watch this and wow, he's, you know, he's an amazing painter and all the rest of it. I don't think that. I'm just your average painter um, in my eyes and I just share my work for you guys so that you guys can learn a little bit more about the job and a little bit more about what we do. I know not all of you guys are sprayers and um, some of you guys just like watching people spray so on that note if it's if this video is a boring one for you because there's not a lot of information in it or something like that then do feel free to just mute the video and stick on some tunes and just watch a guy doing his thing with the spray gun in his hand. So on that note let's get into this job. Now at this shop we use solvent base coat so this job really, I'd say two really good wet coats and it's coloured and then your third coat really would be your blend and effect coat really. Now I have to say I painted this colour twice and it was absolute pain to blend out. Whenever I blended this colour on this job and on another job that I did with it as well, it did leave quite a mottly, really uneven finish. It was a right pain and there's not many colours at all that I struggle with to blend to be fair but this was definitely one of them. Now it was only a trade job but even though this was only a trade job it's still a new car so I want to make sure that it's right because yeah even though it's a trade job some trade jobs I wouldn't say cut corners but you don't go as far as you would on a private job you know you will put the blend in that pillar and um, you'll see in a bit we do put a blend in the bumper on a private job I prefer to do a full clear on a panel um, I prefer to do it on a trade job as well really but at the end of the day this isn't my shop so I do what basically the boss wants me to do if I'm told to put a clear blend in the car then whether I agree with it or not you know I don't pay the wages he does so I'll put a clear blend in it. So at this stage in this actual paint job I've put down my two coats and I've put down my blend and effect coat but as I was tacking off this door here I really was not too happy with it. So I just went over it again, over these blend areas, just to try and feather out that blend that little bit further. Because um, the colour match on this was a really good colour. Um, it matched really well. Um, I could have almost done this car edge to edge, the colour was that good to be fair. But no matter how much I tried to feather this colour out um, and just tickle it out at the ends, it just was not having it. It was not having it at all. Um, and like I say, it is one of those, it's not often that a colour gives me um, any hassle but just for some reason, just the metallic over the blend areas 
on this car was just not sitting right at all. And like I say, you know, I mean, some painters might have said, you know what, it's a trade job, you know, if you get it outside, you're not really going to notice it all that too much. But I'm just not like that. It was really playing on my mind. So it's not often that I use it, but I did actually go and grab some clear black binder for this one, which I'll show you that stage next. And just use that as a little bit of blending clear, um, just to blend this base coat and just to help it settle that little bit nicer. Now, with the solvent based blending clears, the brilliant thing with it is you can paint it over your blend panel. Um, I prefer to do it like this, I prefer to do it at the end if I've got a problem with it, rather than putting it down first, because sometimes I just really don't need to use it. So I'll pop out, I'll just get a quick bit. And I've put it in the iWater Evo for this. Um, the actual other side where I did the wing and the bumper, I didn't have a problem with the way it was laying down. It was just on this side of the car for whatever reason. I don't know, but it was just really starting to knock me off on this day. It was just one of those days where this was in the, the height of the summer and it was red hot in the workshop. I mean, the boob was running 25 to 26 degrees with the heater off. Um, you know, it was that hot that sweat was coming out of my glove, so it really wasn't. An enjoyable place to be at that time um, so all I'll do is just put a little bit of blending clear over where I'm going to put these blends now with it being a solvent blending clear and it being a really hot day then I went straight over it back to back to give it two coats to make sure there was a nice build on there and on a dark color like this even though some blending clears are a little bit yellowy um, on a dark color like this you're not going to notice it even if you do it edge to edge to your unblended panel like that wing on the front of the car and as I say, this wet bed now, as I blend the colour over, and I'm basically going to go back over and put an effect coat and a blend coat back over the side of this car now. And this will just allow the metallics and the pearls in the paint just to settle and sit that little bit nicer on this wet bed. And it will just give you then that perfect blend on a colour like this that's giving you a bit of grief. And even on you know colours like silvers and stuff like that it's really really rare that I actually use a wet bed um, to aid the blends it's just for me there's just them um, really random odd colours like this one that look like they'd be really easy to blend and it's a nice dark colour and it's gonna you know you got it in your head that it's gonna be a really simple job and it just turns out to be an absolute pain in the arse to blend um, but at the end of the day you know it just goes to show that you know no matter how good we are as painters there's always them odd colours that are just going to catch you out and you just have to cook, just whip out the booth, grab a bit of um, blending clear put a bit of a wet bed down and then just re-blend it and as you can see here that wet bed's there and I'm just giving that a really light blend straight over the top of that white bed um, and that'll just give that metallic and that colour now that perfect lay down across that door so rather than stressing about it and worrying about it it's just a lot simpler whip out, grab that wet bed, re-blend them areas, just give it an extra dust over and um, just to make sure that you know when we've been doing that wet bed and that effect coat there's no issues on this door that we've pretty much solid painted. Um, I always like to sort of go over the whole bit again rather than just redo that little bit of a blend. Um, just keeps it in my mind then that the whole job's right again. Alright so now on to the fun bit and the, probably the bit that you guys most like watching so we're on to the clear coat stage so as I said at this time of year in the shop um, it was a few months ago now it was back like the end of July when I shot this video and it was put at a time when it was red hot I mean the best time to paint the be really was to get in early in the morning at like half seven and try and get the biggest jobs out of the way first things because after the dinner the boo was running about 36 degrees and it's just it was I won't say it was horrendous to paint in, but at 36 degrees when you're in a spray boob and you're running around in a paint suit with an air, you know, with your mask and everything on, it's getting really hot and really uncomfortable. So, you know, it's a case of I want to get in, smash these jobs, and get out and get them on bake. And the good thing is, as well, when the weather's this hot, you can up your fluid that little bit more, move a little bit faster, and really sort of like smash that clear on, and it's really nice to get that really real quick job but also get that real quick nice finish on the car as well and with this being a trade job you know we don't want to spend too much time flat and polishing this so as I said before tacking in between them coats um, 
and tacking before you clear folk stage just makes that little bit of a difference. So for the clear coat stage I was using the colour mix clear coat, um, it's two to one, it's got no thinners in it whatsoever um, at this time of year, it's just a case of two to one straight out of the tin. Um, I was using the Iwater Evo with the 1.3 HD setup in it, brilliant gun for clear coat, um, I think for like the three £320 price mark that this gun's got. Um, you really, you're not going to really buy a better gun at that sort of price range really. Um, you really can smash the clear on with it. Settings wise, I've got the fan, I think, around about one and three quarter turns out from fully closed. The fluid on this one, I've probably got it on this day at about three turns out because it was a warm day. So you could really sort of leather the clear on the car without any risk of it running or sagging or anything like that. And like I say, although it was like a little bit uncomfortable to paint in the booth at this time of year, um, and we were really busy at this time of year as well as painting anything up to like six jobs a day, and jobs of this size or bigger as well, so you know it was kind of uncomfortable in the booth. It's really nice to get in there and paint in this kind of heat, and sort of really get in there and smash it on and put out a really nice job and get it really nice off the gun finish. And sometimes that little bit of extra heat just really does help you just get that clear on that little bit nicer and that little bit quicker. Um, as I was saying, this um, Iwata Supernova um, is an absolute cracking little gun. Um, I've just actually picked up the LS400 NTEC version for base coat. Um, really loving that. I'm going to try and get a review up on that within, well, within the next sort of like four to five days for you guys because um, it's not a gun that I've looked at getting before but I have to say since I've had it I've not put it down um, it has replaced my Bel Area now as my base coat gun um, and I think really if depending on your sort of budget I think the Bel Area and the WS400 is a really good base coat and clear coat sort of like set up um, you know if you're on sort of like a medium miss budget you know, if you've got the extra money and you can afford the LS400 uh, LS and the WS400, that's an absolutely cracking base coat and clear coat set up. Um, it's one thing that I cannot take away from my water. I have had my Bel Area now a very long time, about four, four and a half years, um, and it's never skipped a beat. I've never done anything to it apart from replace a pot where I dropped it once. You know, it really has never given me any grief, and you guys have seen it again and again and again on the channel. It's by far my most used spray gun out of all my spray guns um, and the whole summer long I was using the WS400 I was absolutely loving it um, it's a great gun to smash clear on with um, you can get that really nice wet finish with this gun with a lot of ease as well you know it doesn't take too much setup once you've got your fan dialed in because you do have to turn the fan down and once you've got it dialed in for the clear coat that you're using you can just pick it up smash your job out and you you know, it's a really nice, easy gun to use. To be fair, I mean, credit to Iwata, they are they do make some really nice guns. And plus, I mean, the Supernova. I mean, let's face it, it really does look cracking as well. And as I said, for the price, you you know, you just can't fault this gun really. Um, and if you want a little bit more information on this gun being used as a clear coat gun, then do check out our review of the Iwata WS400. I will put a link on the cards at the end of this video. So second coat of clear now, I've left my gun settings the exact same, I'm just getting it on now, nice and wet, nice and smooth. I want to try and get that factory finish off the gun so I'm not going for a glassy finish over this car, I want a little bit of peel in it and that's the good thing about this clear coat. If you put it down and it looks a little bit too peely, within a few seconds it will flow out and tack off and it will just give you that really nice smooth peely finish then so it'll match in really nice and it has got a good quite a good build as well actually it's it's a two coat full system but if you get any tiny little dirt specks or anything like that it will fill them up so it's only if you get any like big dirt nibs or anything like that that they're actually going to show up in this clear coat you know although it is a, a thinner clear coat compared to most you know once you put two coats on there it does give you a nice build it's relatively cheap as well I think it's around about 60 pound a kit 
Um, it's not too bad as far as like efficiency goes. You can do sort of like average paneling, like 150mm mix clear with it um, in two coats, which is you know pretty nice, pretty easy. It's pretty simple to gauge, you know, how much clear you need per panel on your car with, you know, which is, it is generally a nice clear to use. As it's getting into the colder months now, now we're sort of like getting into October, November, that sort of time of year, then I will start putting it in the booth when the booth's on spray just to warm it up a little bit, or I'll just start adding that touch of thinners to it just to help it flow out that little bit. But I mean, as you can see by that quarter there, you know, real nice gloss, real nice wet finish to it, you know, it is quite a nice clear really for a sort of like budget clear to use. And it's quite good for drying after a bake as well. If you do this in a full two coat system like I'm doing here, and let's face it, I'm not hanging about, it's going on nice and wet, there's plenty of material going on there, but not overly excessive amount of material. Um, if I put the beer on a 30 minute bake at 60 degrees, let the beer do its cool down cycle, take the car out, once the car's gone cold, there's no point, there's no sort of like hassle in nibbing and polishing this straight away. Um, and the chances of getting any dye back in it are pretty slim to be quite honest with you. Um, it does come up really nice. And the good thing is it's quite a forgiving clear so like on this door, you know, I just want to get that door a little bit more of a gun finish so I don't have to spend an hour or two messing around flat and polishing it. So I can just give it that extra little bit of a coat over that door if I need to. Just to make on them sure on them flat panels that the peel finish across theirs nice and even across the panel. And this is, I suppose, one thing that I really do love about my job. Um, a lot of you guys on YouTube and on Instagram have been PMing me through Instagram recently, asking me questions about different guns and about different clears. And even one lad who's an apprentice was asking me some questions the other day on Instagram. Um, which is like a really nice lad. Just trying to learn a few extra things. And don't forget, guys, you know, if you do have any questions, then Instagram is always open if you want to pop a question um, through a PM on there. It sometimes takes me a little while to reply. Obviously, now we get a lot of subscribers, there's a lot more questions. But I will always do my best to get back to you guys and try and answer any questions that I can. And if I don't have the answer, I'll always do my best to find out for you. But one thing that me and this lad were talking about is the fact that he absolutely loves this job even though he's not doing it full time yet he loves every aspect of it he loves sanding and everything else and like I said to him that you know for me no matter how long I've been doing this job I still love getting in the booth smashing a car out and then standing by and looking at that car after and thinking you know what we made a really nice job of that car and I do think you get a lot of sense of I don't know achievement out of this job you know you stand back and look at this car now and you know that makes me smile I'm happy with that job it's nice and clean, it's got a nice wet finish, it's going to be a gun finish out the door, a few little nibs out of that top end and this thing's good to go and you know for me that's what makes this job worthwhile, that's what I get out of bed for, you know I absolutely love the job that I do and you know I'm kind of blessed that I get to do it. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you've enjoyed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and smash that like button if you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again soon.